with Paul today, Paul Hamblett. Good morning, morning. He of the 19 minute time on Porlock Hill. More to come in a second. Now I'm no GCN and I certainly lack the knowledge of a GP Llama. So this is gonna be my best effort review of the Villia Zero SLR and the lightweight wheels, i.e. that of an enthusiastic amateur. Just prior to the start of the segment, I was looking behind just to make sure Paul was getting the nice shots. Never an issue, I now understand. I mean, that boy is strong. He can stick to you like glue. Anyway, bottom line is here, I didn't get up to full chat at the beginning of the climb. Now, I reckon that in order to hunt down a PB on Swains, I'd otherwise need to be at about 40 kilometers an hour around about here at the start of the segment. Not that today I was looking down at the bar. Like a middle-aged Bambi, I take my first and tentative pedal strokes out of the saddle and the watts flow freely. All feels good. Warming to my task, I settle back down to spin the big ring and prepare a second little dig. And for those who like their nature, listen to the lightweights scything through the cold London air. My kind of wildlife. Confidence in my new steed building rapidly, it was time to sit back down and save a few kilojoules for the final assault. on Paul's bidding, it's time yeah. to pull the pin out of my Euro Chic grenade. And I vow solemnly that I will never let this machine become an item of cafe stop eye candy. And the video demands yet more of my finest power and instantly rewards my efforts with rich and assured velocity. And as our mash fest continues, I'm getting a growing sense of the extra stiffness and stability, and the bicycle demands yet more Speed power. Pio Potenza, Pio Potenza. A change. Stand. La Bici is generously forgiving yeah. of me changing up a gear while standing. And as one, we minimize our collective mass and translate as much of my humble force into acceleration as Newton's laws yeah, will allow. Legs pulsating with the irons accumulating menacingly in the lactate, more of that to come, we remain locked onto a vector to take us over the brow of this iconic urban climb. That's the first climb. On the video. Me. The detailed review of the bike, components and costs will follow in just a few moments. But many people asked, who was the cameraman on Box Hill? So relax and enjoy the indefatigable Paul Hamblet at work, spinning the very biggest of big gears and serenely propelling himself to a time of 2 minutes 25 seconds at 476 watts average. I, I was a mere 2 minutes 37 seconds. Now today, what with the new handlebars, I didn't have a fully functioning camera mount. So please do excuse the chaotic cinematography but top right, you can see me burning through all kinds of muscle glycogen just to stay in Paul's weight.
spectacular. Now we've had five ascents of Swain's Lanes, we have a little bit of potter in between each, not five in a row as originally <laughs> predicted, mainly because new handlebars. Did I mention new bike? Anyway, new handlebars mean the GoPro attachment wasn't working very well. So Paul got lovely one of me ascending Swain's. I was absolute max, max, max full gas and he was kind of cruising behind me like, I don't know, zone three style kind of thing. And then I tried to get a bit of footage of Paul and that's where we had to have another four attempts to get a half decent one. So how did you find Swain's Paul? Yeah, nice little climb, yeah. All, all sort of sensible to start with and then it pokes, pokes you in the face towards the end. Yeah, the sting in the tail of the lane they call Swain's, yeah. Up and out of saddle, full gas and lactate plus the irons that come with the lactate, I understand. Yes, apparently so, yes. The irons are nasty little buggers that make you feel bad. Apparently, Paul was telling me, lactate is a good thing because lactate is in fact... A fuel. A fuel, an energy system. Don't quote me. <laughs> I am quoting you. That's exactly what I'm doing. We're on YouTube. I'm quoting you. Anyway, the Villier was good. I'm going to come back more to the Villier and the rest of this vlog. Lovely bike, really stiff, felt planted. Um, TBA yet whether it's worth all the money with these wheels um, but still very jealous of this man's 42 love that 42 Italian engineering British cakes So having now put the Villier through its paces as hard as I'm personally capable of on both short and medium climbs, I'm now in a position to provide an interim review concerning the specifications, the cost, the weight, and whether at this early stage it makes me feel good and provides value for money. So turning to the frame, this is the Villier Zero SLR, it's their lightweight climbing frame. It's a little bit stiffer than the previous variant, and as you can see in this Admiral Blue, it really does pop in this beautiful sunlight. Fully integrated handlebar unit from Villier, and obviously no cables, which makes it very, very pretty indeed. Now I've personally specified, <laughs> because everybody loves these wheels on Zwift, the lightweight Milstein Evo disc. Now some of you won't like the disc variant, but you only have the ability to specify disc um, on the Villier Zero SLR. And as you can see, there is an element of um, dish on these to make them a little bit more aero. These are more of an all round, um, kind of versatile wheel uh, from lightweight and so they do weigh in the pair at just under 1200 grams but they are very very stiff and combined with a stiff frame that means fewer wasted watts. Now you can see here um, I've specified the Shimano Durace DI group set. Um, I think I've got a 30 on the back here. Again probably the top of the range Shimano and I have found Shimano to be certainly more reliable than the Campagnolo EPS that I once had on the Colnago. I do like the Shimano group set and this feels beautifully smooth uh, when you're on the move. I've got the lightweight bottle cages and I've also got um, a Shimano ceramic bottom bracket and again that helps ensure fewer wasted watts and a better transfer of power through the crank. Turning to the seat, Seller Italia, nice lightweight carbon one. This is pretty comfortable, finding it all right thus far. And I've been riding a carbon seat previously in the Conago, so no real um, discomfort in terms of um, a transition. So turning to performance, how does a Villier do when the gradient steps up and the matches start getting burned? Very nicely, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Whether it's a short punchy climb, circa 2 minutes 30 like Swain's Lane, 
or indeed just under five minutes for the Farnham Road hill climb event that I undertook earlier on in the month, or indeed like a seven minute effort for the Zwift segment here on Box Hill, the bike feels good. You notice the circa kilogram or just over a kilogram of weight saving versus the Conargo and it certainly feels stiffer. It's kind of intangible, but somehow the setup feels more rigid beneath you. So I definitely guess I'm wasting fewer watts through the Dura race there. Um, and also I'd say that these lightweights with a slightly more aero dish, I mean, they feel really, really, really lovely to ride. I mean, they sigh through the air, make a very, very satisfying noise indeed. A kind of You can kind of hear it on the GoPro footage. So all in all, I reckon that the kind of combination of the lighter setup, slightly more aero setup, um, and the stiffer kind of combination of components is definitely translating to greater speed um, versus the power that I'm putting down. So definitely loads of ticks in the box um, for the bike. And certainly for the Farnham Road hill climb, I've got my best ever um, 400 watt power duration uh, for that climb, just over two minutes 40. Definitely um, felt good putting that down. I was able to transition into kind of upper threshold for the back end of that climb and the bike felt good on both parts of it. Here on Box Hill, when you're seated and you're spinning, it feels silky smooth, very, very comfortable. And I'm kind of hopeful that bodes well for kind of the longer climbs down in the Southwest um, or indeed in Europe. More to come on that, which is why this is kind of an interim review. So turning to the Gio race, how does it feel versus the Altegra that I got specified on the Conargo? Well, I'll be honest here, both feel really, really good. Both are silky smooth. The transition between gears is sharp. So I guess you're paying for the lighter weight on the Durace. Thus far, it's been reliable, but it is early days. The Altegra has been very reliable. And I gotta say, I am turning into a bit of a Shimano person. So turning to the value for money question. Is it worth basically a 100% premium against the all-in cost of my second-hand um, Canago C60 frame with the upgraded Campagnolo Borrow wheels and the kind of net neutral trade-out um, of the Campagnolo EPS in favour of the Shimano Altegra? Well, definitely there's a big element of branding and style associated with a purchase and a setup like this. And if you have a high propensity to spend a lot of your disposable income on bikes and you love riding outdoors, you like mixing with your friends and kind of comparing um, setups and this kind of thing, well, it's a bit like buying a kind of high-end car. Um, there's definitely an element of branding and style and all that kind of stuff, as well as the pure performance element to it. I like that kind of thing, and so it definitely appeals to me in a really, really big way. I do feel great when I'm out riding this particular setup. In terms of the performance, definitely you notice a difference. Um, but if performance is your primary motivation for buying a bike like this, um, you could probably get lighter wheels than these lightweight wheels with smaller rims. So definitely you could spec those out. And if you don't like disc brakes, well clearly this isn't a frame for you. But if you're looking for a versatile bike, that performs really, really amazingly and is comfortable as well, then definitely the initial impressions for this thing are incredible. Really like it thus far. Um, looking forward to getting out on some of the longer climbs in the West Country, maybe Exmoor Forest again, that kind of thing, and definitely out into Europe. More to come.